Hello, everybody. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at Five. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Wontor. And we're here with Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And are you feeling magical, Paul? Always feeling magical. I knew you were going to say that. It's the most magical that. time of the year. It's the most magical it's time true. of the year because the illusionists are on Broadway. Yes. And Eric Chen and Dom Chambers are here to enchant us. But first, our top five. We got a little switcheroo happening over at The Inheritance. Yeah, so Matthew Lopez is The Inheritance, is now playing at the Barrymore Theater. And we knew that um, John Benjamin Hickey, one of the super talented stars who first did the play over in London, we knew that he had to leave because he got a really good fancy gig. He's directing Sarah Jessica Parker and Matthew Broderick, good friends of his, in Neil Simon's Plaza Suite which is playing in Boston, I believe, in February. So oh. it's starting rehearsals. So he is leaving the production for four months. Um, and the role of Henry Wilcox, which, fun fact, is the only character that has the same name in Howard's End. The Ian oh. Forster novel. Did you know that? I did not. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and fantastic news. Tony Goldwyn, who we love, is taking over the role. for. Def I definitely have to go back and see that. He's so good. Um, and Tony Goldwyn, of course, was recently in uh, Network. Network. But it says here, he's most known for TV's Scandal. Scandal. I think he's most known for, for Ghost, if you're of a certain um, age. He was the baddie on Go in Ghost. Oh, that was him? Oh, my God. He was so horrible to Patrick I didn't know Swayze. that was him. <laughs> That's him hitting on Demi Moore and all that. Oh, that was Drama. him. Drama. Anyway, he was also on Broadway in uh, Promises, Promises and the play Holiday. So anyway, that's a fun little casting switch over at The Inheritance. And these Londoners sure do love play rehearsal. And that's because Be More Chill is going to London, and now we have some casting. Are you ready? Are you ready, Paul? You ready? So ready. Okay. We have Scott Follin and Blake Patrick Anderson playing the leads, and six former Six Queens, the sixth the oh, musical. Well, people must love Renee them, Lamb they love that album. And mm -hmm. Millie O'Connell will be joining the cast, as well as Miracle Chance. That's a name for the illusionist to uh, jump on. Uh, <laughs> uh -huh. Stuart Clark, Eloise Davies. James Hamid, Miles Paloma, and Christopher Fry. So this will be playing from February 12th, uh, begins February 12th, opens February 18th, and runs through May 3rd. Pretty exciting. Cool. Pretty exciting. And congratulations to these new 2020 Golden Globe nominees. I feel like every year the Hollywood Awards get more Broadway. Am I right? Yeah, no, you're not wrong at all. You're it's completely so great right. because right. so many Broadway talents are getting more opportunity in film and TV. And then they, as long as they, they come back to us, I don't care. But they, they need all, to yeah, come and back. they do come back for the most part. Sada Ramirez, mm -hmm. where are you? But the okay. people who do come back, <laughs> that look that's you just the team. We didn't catch that. <laughs> 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 anyway, she won her Tony and left. <laughs> anyway, whatever. She's <laughs> lovely. I saw her recently, and I told her that she's fine. <laughs> anyway, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association announced the Golden Globes, and all these theater people are getting work in Hollywood, and then they're fantastic, which we already knew. So here are some of them: Ben Platt, nominated for Netflix's The Politician. We Congratulations, knew him when. Ben. Mm -hmm. Billy Porter, who's won every award for HX's Pose. Cynthia Revo. Nominated not only for Harriet, but also for uh, Best Song, Stand Up, that mm. she co-wrote with Joshua Brian Campbell. There's a really good chance these might be two Oscar nominations for wow. Cynthia Riva. Everyone's buzzing about this. Exciting. I just heard Hillary Clinton on the Howard Stern Show saying how much she loved Harriet. So there's an there's endorsement. There's an endorsement for you. Uh, well, best original you. song, that, that new Cats song by Android Weber and Taylor Swift called Beautiful Ghosts was nominated and... The Secret of Dina Menzel sauce into the unknown from Frozen 2 got another nomination. Uh, they won previously for uh, Frozen for Kristen Anderson Lopez and Robert Lopez. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, Michelle Williams and Sam Rockwell for playing Fosse and Verdon, and that also got nominated for Best Series. There's a lot. We're super excited. We're cheering them all on, except if they're if up against each other. Like Cynthia Reeve was up against Andrew Lloyd Webber. That's a fun wow. smackdown. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and some of our stage mm -hmm. faves are helping create a new musical. So we knew that Jodi Pico, who is a best-selling novelist, wrote mm -hmm. a new musical with her daughter, Samantha Van Leer, and now we have some casting I know news. with her daughter. That's it's, fun. Isn't yeah. that fancy yeah. and sweet? Ariel Jacobs will star as Delilah in um. the off-Broadway production, along with Jason Gote, Morgan Siobhan Green, Vicki Lewis, Will Burton, Carrie St. Louis, and more. What a great group of people. Vicki Lewis? Vicki Lewis. You love that. Uh, love this Vicky will Lewis. premiere at, at off-Broadway's Tony Kaiser Theater in 2020. Uh, Jeff Calhoun and Lauren Lataro are the director and choreographer so look for it in april april 21st it cool. begins previews yes and we got some exciting news for the secret garden cast so the exciting news is two words ramin karamlu 
uh, will be will be headlining the, the cast. So, concert. So, uh, <laughs> yes, uh, at the London Palladium on April fourth, twenty twenty. Also, uh, Lucy Jones and Jack Yarrow will also be in the cast. Nick Winston is directing. Of course, you know the Secret Garden musical. Uh, Mandy Patinkin was in it on Broadway. That was good. That Rebecca was Luker, so good. Little Daisy Egan winning her Tony. Little Daisy Egan. <laughs> it's not uh, little it's by Marsha Norman and Lucy Simon, and there's been a lot of energy hoping that there would be a Broadway revival. And there's you never a lot know. Of start, and he actually, Ramin actually did that. The concert, right, mm-hmm. with Sierra Bagas. Sierra Bagas. But mm-hmm. anyway, no, no news for Broadway yet, but if you're over in London, you could see this concert version. Um, also, wait, can I interrupt yeah, you ahead. guys with some breaking news? Oh, oh. breaking news. I hope it's like, breaking really news. breaking news? Yeah. You guys didn't even. We don't know what it is. Beetlejuice has set its closing date. Oh. Yeah. When is when? that? So the closing date is going to be on June 6, 2020. Hey. Okay. You've got it's some okay. Time. They've got we some, have time. some time. We got Beth and I remember a day when cast would get six days' notice. This is a six month notice. And we're getting a six national a tour. Oh, cool. We're getting a national awesome. tour. We'll launch in the fall 2021 with casting cities and dates to be announced. So, okay. six more months, that, but that, very well, sad. Fantastic. Breaking but, news. We've, that's a Beetlejuice first. Beetlejuice fans, yeah. you have six or seven more months to see Beetlejuice. I mean, it's a big hit. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think there's another tenant coming into that theater, which I'm sure we'll find out about soon. Yeah, um, much so. Also, on the site, I sat down with Erica Jane. You were very excited. Fir- she did her first interview on her run in Chicago. Remind us who Erica Jane is. She's from, sorry, Beth, Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And what is you she doing? You know or you don't know. And she's going to be Roxy Hart. I know oh, that yeah. part. Roxy Hart. Yeah, we went to a photo shoot where she got, we got the official first photo of her. And we, uh, she was lovely. And she starts in January. Um, and what else? Diana. Diana has a music the video. Diana musicals coming up. It looks very glamorous. That's yeah. all I'm going to say. And Lots it's of called jackets. If. The song is called If. if? Mm-hmm. It's yes, by the Tony winners of um, who wrote Memphis. Oh, yeah. yes. David there Bryan, Jody Pietro. They That's also right. wrote Diana. So we get a little peek at that. And well, I'm out. Well, Paul, thank you for your service. Thank you, Beth. Caitlin, will you tell us about our guests, please? Gladly. Yes, guys, we have Dom Changers and Eric Chan here with us today. They are the brand new additions to The Illusionists, who have now been on Broadway. This is their fifth winter usually during the holiday season they come to broadway and this year they're here with magic of the holidays this is the first time both dom and eric have been on the show and this is after they both appeared on america's got talent they made it all the way to the semifinals so you guys might know them there make sure you can follow eric on instagram and make sure eric ec slates s-l-e-i-g-h-t-s you can follow dom on dom j chambers Yes. And you can follow Beth at B-E-E-B-A. I'm just going to throw that in. That's new today. Yeah. <laughs> but everyone, please leave all of your questions in the comments below. And please welcome Eric, Dom, and Beth. Thank you, Caitlin. Welcome, Yay. gentlemen. Yay. Oh, a little applause. I think <laughs> we deserve it. Thank you. And welcome to Broadway and, oh. to, and to Live at Five. Okay. I'm a little nervous because I don't know how anything works. I don't know. I, I, I've, been, I've seen The Illusionist. And when I see it, I have no idea how you do anything. I know you're not going to tell us. But how is it for you to be in a cast with other magicians with your, your secrets and your, your own, you all have your own talents, you all have an, uh, your own style? Yeah, every performer in the show is so different and we all have our own secrets. I actually get a lot of pleasure watching Eric uh, from The Wings performing every single night because Eric, um, I like to drop this, Eric is the world champion of close-up magic. Yes, he is. Mm. Okay, I need to know your starts because every kid in America gets a magic. Didn't you get some like a magic set? And it usually has some like handkerchief or like a a hat. Mm. It usually has some like pom pom balls and a cup. That's what we had, okay? I didn't obviously master this. And then you just think, I'm going to do this. And then what happens? Nothing. So tell us, when did you get your start in magic? So for me, I started magic when I was in high school. And you know, actually, my, my friend in high school started magic first. And every single day, he would show me a card trick. And to be honest, I thought he was like the lamest guy in school. Because <laughs> I, inter- I, was, I wasn't into magic back then. But then he taught me this really simple, simple trick. And I learned it in five minutes. Five minutes, And I showed it to my other friends. And you know, the reactions I got were amazing. And I have just fell in love with magic ever since. And with the close-up magic, Eric, do you feel like you always have to have a camera or something on you so other people can see what yeah, you're doing? Um, yes. Yeah, so, being on such a big stage, there will need to be um, a camera and projector to, sh- to project what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Um, but your first tricks you were just doing for groups of people, right? Yes. In high school. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. Not close up yet. Okay. Dom, 
Give us baby dumb. My origin story? <laughs> I want to hear the origin story. <laughs> I was actually baby dumb. Not quite baby, but I was just five years old, so little dumb. Oh, you're really yeah, little. Yeah, very okay. little, very little. Um, granddad, my granddad wanted to connect with his grandkids. He learnt magic so he could teach us magic. And I'm very lucky he did because that's what you know set me on my, my path. Did it involve beer? Yeah, I was a five-year-old kid drinking beer out of my shoe. Dom is very famous for his beer trick. Okay. Very inappropriate magic, I tell you what. But uh, it's no, that that came a lot later on. That's only about you know two or three years old. Back then, it was like the tricks you mentioned. You know, the little cups and the balls and the pom poms and things like that. Um, and did you both just have an affinity with it? You could just do it immediately. I mean, obviously, it took five minutes to learn. Apparently, we can all. Where's your friend who taught you? I have no idea. Okay. Like, shout out. <laughs> shout out but to But thank you, friend. Thanks. Thank you, lame magic Killing friend. It. Yes. I his name. <laughs> so <laughs> tell me about meeting the other magicians and the illusionists. Um, well, that's, that's, here's the thing. This is an amazing cast, and we all have really clicked. We've all really clicked. We get along so well, and I think that's why, you know, people are enjoying the show so much, because we're enjoying the show. We're having a good time. Uh, Eric and I met, as you mentioned, on AGT. Mm -hmm. Some of the other cast members I've seen around the traps, around the circuit in the last few years, but others I've, I've never met before. Uh, Kevin James, who is one of the founders of The Illusionist, mm -hmm. and one of the great inventors in magic. Um, I've looked up to him since I was a little kid. I've watched him doing the routines that he is doing in this show when I was a little, a little five-year-old doing magic, doing these shows, and, uh, doing these acts, and I'm now in a show with him doing that act. It's, um, it's crazy. You're all very different, but do you try to top each other a little bit? Do you try to show off for each other? <laughs> I, want a, I want the real dirt with the illusionist. Real you guys. Uh, it's very competitive. <laughs> uh, we often like sabotage each other's props back. No, it's, it's not. <laughs> I had a feeling. Yeah, it's not. It's pretty, I think we're all, we're all on, you know, we're all mates, aren't we? Yeah, we are, of course. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing on his back right now. It's uh, fine. Yeah. It's fine. Are you going to show us any magic today? Do you want to see magic tonight? I'm actually terrified, like I said. But sure, yes, I do, if you, oh, okay. if you want to. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Well, you know, this is, this is Broadway.com. The, the, stake, the stakes are high, so I am going to do some high stakes magic. Is that okay? Sure. We're terrified. Look at All her right? face. Yeah. This wasn't planned, was it? No, it wasn't, it wasn't planned. planned. No, no. It. I'm going to do a magic trick for you with $2,500. Wow. Okay, numbers. We're good at numbers, aren't we? Yeah. Um, it is Monopoly money, <gasps> oh. but it is $2,500 in the less high stakes. <laughs> not to be confused with Australian money. Have a look at that. Mm. I'm it's just going to shuffle Australian. back a little bit. Have you seen Australian money? Yeah, Australian money is bright no. and colourful and it's made out of plastic. Okay. I'm scared uh, to touch anything. Oh, it's okay. You can touch it. Okay. You can feel it. Mm, it's real. It's just paper. But, but Monopoly. Yeah, yeah Monopoly <laughs> money. Okay, let's uh, raise the stakes a little. Uh, like I said, not to be confused with Australian money. This is what, what Australian what, money looks like. What? If you haven't seen it before. What just happened? Why did that? I see. Did you like, <laughs> did you like what? How you did have that? that. Oh. This is, Wait, this is not. You, you can keep it. That's for you. I'll keep those. Wait. Wow. What? She's crying. No, I'm okay, really, just like, really okay? like, I, yeah, I'm just like, um, I don't know how that happened. I missed mm. something. I don't know. We'll have to roll back the tape. I don't know what just happened. <laughs> roll it back. It's fine. This must be something oh, thank that you. you. Thank you so yes. Much. Oh yes, we must clap. Crowd goes wild. Bravo, yes. bravo. Crowd goes wild. Oh, you just okay. happen to have that on you. We did not talk about this. No, we, we met did not. when 100%. we sat down. Just carry around monopoly money, and you can have that. That's for you. That's fifty dollars. I feel so rich. You bucks. <laughs> and Shit. so freaked out. When I've seen The Illusionist before, Broadway audiences go, they go insane. They all think they know what's going on. I brought my son, and he was like, oh, I, I know how they do that. He didn't know how they do that. He didn't know. <laughs> he just, he, you know, everyone thinks they know. So what are some of the reactions that you're getting from the audiences on Broadway? Oh, the audience have been great. Broadway audiences have been really good, haven't Amazing, they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, the, the, the thing about the illusion is there's something in there for, for all ages. doesn't matter who you are. There's something in there. Yeah, that's true. Show. And it's very much an international audience in some ways because you don't, yeah. magic is, just speaks to everybody. Don't Definitely, you think? Yeah, because for me, like magic is a way to communicate with people, and it's not—it's it's language that everyone will understand. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, what makes this a holiday show? Well, there is a lot of holiday magic in it, and I think you know the holidays are in in itself inherently magical. Um, it's a it's a magical time of year, so magic and holidays they just go together. Um, but there are also some very magical uh, holiday based routines in this show. I don't want to give away too much. Right, no, we don't want to give it away. It out, but, but you'll um, feel the holiday magic. If you'll you feel the holiday it. magic, yes. absolutely. So tell me the trajectory of becoming a magician at the top of your game, like you guys are. What you learned your trick in high school. You learned your trick from your grandfather. Then what happens? How do you hone your craft? 
Mm. Because I feel like magicians don't like to share too much. Mm. Go on, Eric, share. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, you know, I've been doing magic for almost 10 years now. And I think it was during college, I really wanted to be a magician. Like, that was my dream. And during my sophomore year of college, I decided to leave school and secretly go to Vancouver to do some street magic. And I say secretly because I didn't tell my parents. And That's a good trick. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so they were, <laughs> I, I was stayed in Vancouver for almost half a year, and then they would still call me, and I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'm still in Hawaii studying. So I went to I University. didn't know about this. This is great. <laughs> it, was, yeah, it, was, it was fun. It was fun. So, you know, I... <laughs> the illusion of being in Hawaii when you're in Vancouver. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, I just did a lot of street magic back then, and... Now, you do close-up yeah. magic. You, that's what you're most known for. So what were you yes. doing on the street? Were you doing card tricks? Yes. So uh -huh. when I first landed in Vancouver, I brought nothing but a deck of cards and $40. I didn't bring clothes. Wow. I didn't bring anything. It was, it was, in, it was really fun. <laughs> and you know, artist. Yeah. And when I landed, I just realized that I forgot to book a place to stay. <laughs> and, yeah. So then I started calling my friends, and then I called my high school friend, and, and she just landed in Vancouver as well. So we met in the airport, and she let me stay at her place for a month, and everything just went really smoothly after that. It was amazing. That sounds like a smooth landing. That sounds like <laughs> every, I, I think if I did that, that would be, happen exactly the same way. So you had a lot of confidence in your skills then. Uh, it's more like I just, I really wanted to be a magician. And that's, you had a passion for it. Yeah. Got I it. I just took that's the a risk. crazy story. I love that. Yeah. Dom, what, so what, cool. where, what did you, where did you go with a pack of cards and 40 bucks? Um, <laughs> nightclubs. <laughs> Back in the day. Uh, my story was, was, it was just all I did, you know, when I was five, I was doing magic and then I kept doing it. I realized I could make money out of it. I was doing Chris, uh, kids' birthday parties. Mm -hmm. Again, want to clarify, I was not doing beer magic at kids' birthday parties. Um, <laughs> no but beer. that was, you know, through, through high school, I was m making money doing shows for families and kids. And then I realized I could actually do this as a job. And, you know, the type of magic I was doing took a bit of a, a turn and that allowed me to get out there and perform for the perform for the sort of audiences that we are here in Broadway, so. Are you always developing new tricks? Are you always working on something new? Because uh, you got, me, illusionists yes. always have, they always have new people, and they always have, they always top themselves and have new stuff. Are you always working on, I know now you're just sort of doing this show, but what are you doing for yourself? No, even for me, just during my break times, I would just, con just keep thinking of new ideas. Because it's, it's really important to have new ideas, because, you know, right after the illusionist, we will have other plans as well. So I need to constantly have new stuff. Yeah. Without, without giving away too much, Eric uh, does the final routine in the show. We all get to watch this routine. All the performers come back and we get to watch it. It's the big finish. Um, and Eric will constantly be adding in little surprises and twists for us. We're not expecting it. We're all watching it on the screen. We go, oh, what? That, that's new. And we <laughs> ask him, we said, oh yeah, I just made that at five minutes ago. Uh, that's just what Eric does. So he he's, clearly so, oh, just yeah. does his thing. Constant, <laughs> constantly coming up with new things. It's amazing. It's mind blowing. That's amazing. All right, I know you all have questions. So, Caitlin, what are our viewers asking? It's true. All right. So, Lena wants to know how did you guys even get to join the Illusionists on Broadway? Like, how did that even happen for you? Was it something you were looking out for? Were they like, hey, come do this? What no, was that story? You get a phone call. Just, what happened? Uh, I think it was thanks to AGT, really. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think being on America's Got Talent is a big reason for us being being here. It's a big platform. So that was yeah. a big platform. We were both on the show together. Um, and I think, yeah, off the back of that, we were... You just can't get rid of each other. Yeah, we've uh, <laughs> spent a lot of time together in the last we did, six yes. months, haven't we? Yeah. yeah. That's nice. So Elise wants to know, what is it like being in New York City during Christmas time and all the magical... The best. The magic of Times Square. <laughs> love it. I love it. I love New York so much. I don't want to yes. leave... Uh, the cold has hit me, as you can probably hear right now, my throat and everything. Um, it's Australian summer right now. We have hot Christmas right. back home. So this is like not usual for me, but I love it so much. You love it? Yeah. Yeah. It's so I good. do. But so far, um, today it's been raining. But other than that, it's been really nice. Like I've explored the city for a while and then it was, it was nice. <laughs> cool. Okay, so Tina wants to know about the holiday twists that are put onto your like talents and your magic. Are there specific things that had to be added to make it more like holiday themed, without giving things away? I guess. So for me, I created a completely new act just for the show, and it is full of holiday themed stuff. And like I said, I'm not going to give anything away, and I do change it quite often <laughs> just to keep myself entertained. <laughs> yeah, without giving away too much either. There are. You know, my 
my uh, the acts that I'm known for are in the show. But there, you know, there are a few little little uh, holidays additions, a little tweaks, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. little surprises. That's right. Yes. So okay, I mean, there's so many more questions. Let's, oh. let's just do one. one I can or do two one more. more. I okay, can choose. Okay. Mm, I want a good one. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so Jake wants to know, what do you remember most from your first night performing on the Broadway stage? Mm. Broadway debuts. It's pretty surreal, to be honest. Did it, it feel special? You've been on a big, you've been on yeah. big stages before. Yeah, but not Broadway. Yeah. Like, you know, this is where every performer's performer dreams to be. So I was quite, emo- I was quite emotional, to be honest. Mm. Yeah, I really had this moment of, yeah, clarity and reflection at the end of the show. Like, wow, we've just done a Broadway yeah. show. So it was pretty... Well, did you feel the same? Yeah, I did. But yeah. I, was, I was actually a lot more nervous too, though. Right, yeah, mm. same. I was yeah. nervous. I was nervous, really nervous about it. So who would you like to come see The Illusionist? You, I'm sure you have a magician or a celebrity that you would just love to come see him. So this is your opportunity to invite <sighs> them. Huh. You go first. Yeah. Darren, <laughs> Darren Brown's in town. We oh, saw yeah. his show the other day. Oh, yeah. Oh. yeah, we did. Uh, we invited him. He's very busy, but the, the offer remains Darren. Come along and see the show. Tickets are on us. He's, He's fantastic. Great. Did you enjoy He's his sick. show? Loved what, it. Amazing. Loved every minute of it. Yeah. Lots of magic on Broadway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, for me, I don't really know. I guess the one person that I really, or two people that I really want to come is just my parents because oh, they've yeah. never seen me perform before. <laughs> so, Do they think that you're still at college or did you? <laughs> no, 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 no. They, they know where I'm at. They know where I'm yeah. at. I just <laughs> wanted to clear it up. <laughs> figured it out. <laughs> yeah. They figured it, they figured it out. out eventually. <laughs> All right. Well, it's, thank you guys so much for stopping by Broadway.com and go see the illusionist. What is it called? The magic? The magic of, of the, the holidays. holidays. Of the holidays. Thank you for having us. Thank yeah, you. Thank Caitlin, much. will you take us on out, please? Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single weekday here on Facebook. You can listen to us where we get your podcasts by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hit that subscribe button. And just be sure to tune in the rest of the week as we talk to more of your Broadway favorites.